Hello and welcome to a new video on analytic number theory and the mid tub Lefter function. In this video, we're going to be going over a new representation uh, for this um, b sub m uh, n divided by n factorial sum, and it's going to be quite very. It's going to be quite nice, I think. So, first, let's state the result that we already know. Um, we have this uh, sum less than or equal to x a sub m with this uh, representation right here. Here's the heavy side function. It is defined as heavy side or theta of x, uh, zero for x less than zero, one half for x equal to zero, and one for x greater than one. And b sub n and a sub m are connected by the Mobius inversion formula. So a sub m, Dirichlet convolution with one, we go to n equals b sub n. And it's just uh, classical results that we've derived uh, in the past. We also derived uh, this result right here, where you can kind of get the one half term out, and you can kind of repackage these finite sums into uh, this representation right here. So you have, these are the mid toggle left there functions, and the mid toggle left there function is defined right here. This is also the heavy side function, or theta of x. And we have 0 for x less than, for, uh, less than 0, 1 half for x equal to 0, and 1 for x greater than 1. And that's going to basically make these, uh, when this is uh, 0, this is going to be 1 half. All right? And that's exactly where this prime comes in. So if you haven't seen this notation before, it basically just means the last term in this series is going to be halved. OK, very, very nice. So what we'd like to prove is uh, this result right here. So we're gonna do that on the flip side of the board, but I'm going to show you why it's so important and why it's very, very interesting, okay? So what we're going to prove is that uh, our term right here, our sum right here is going to be sum less than equal to x, a sub m, sum d, and this is gonna be starting at zero, so d equals zero, less than or equal to x, and we have um, this term right here, where c sub d of m is this product series right there. And theta of x, as you can see, or the heavy side function, as you can see, instead of m uh, times d, it's going to be m plus d, which is a huge step forward, right? Because last time we had a whole bunch of multiplicative issues with this x uh, m d, right? This is like factor, divisor function, all sorts of stuff, right? What we can do is we can actually solve for when this is equal to uh, zero, and we've done that right here. So very much um, when x uh, equals m plus d, we are very concerned with this uh, occurrence, right? That's when all the halves are going to be. And basically this, is, this statement right here is a partition, right? So if you've studied Ramanujan or if you've studied any of the analytic number theory, you hear a lot about partitions, right? So this is going to be a partition P2 of X, right? And it's defined right here. So um, this is the restricted partition. So P sub K, so we restrict the number of uh, numbers that we can have in the partition. And in this case, P sub two of X equals, is going to be defined as M minus D equals X, such that M is an element of the natural numbers and N is an element of natural numbers. So it's going to be very, very nice. So when we pull out that sum, uh, we're going to get this, um, the partitions, the restricted partitions right there, that's going to be multiplied by our sum, or I'm sorry, our product series right here. And we don't have D in this case, so what we need to do is solve for D. So we say X plus D equals X, so therefore D equals X minus M, and that's going to go right there for D, because we can't have D in terms of... Uh, um, D, right? <laughs> we have to have it in terms of M and X. Okay, and then we have this plus sum D less than X, and then we have the CD of M, which is basically this product right here. So I think this is very nice. This is very, very interesting. If we could get a uh, handle or an understanding on what this uh, product right here is and what it does, uh, we might have some very nice results and some very nice properties. Okay, so I'm gonna flip the board and we are going to uh, prove this right here, okay? So give me 30 seconds. 
All right, smooth transition completed. So what we're going to use is the exponential Lambert series. And if you haven't seen this, this is just a uh, theorem that I've derived on my channel. And what we can do is we can take the Lambert series and kick it up into an exponential generating function. And here we have the Mobius formula definition, and this is going to hold true. Now, there's a well-known identity that this right here is going to equal all of this right here. So all we're going to do is we're going to replace this with this, and we get this uh, very nice sum representation. And as you can see, this x uh, to the m comes out very, very nice. And we can use a uh, result from uh, Cabas and Sagio. This is very, very cool. This, this is a representation of um, this mintog leffler function. And we should say of uh, z. There should be a of z here. Um, z equals this, right? And basically, we have mintog leffler function alpha, m, and l. And we have sum k equals 1 to infinity, uh, c, uh, c sub k, z to the k. And c sub 0 is equal to 1, and c sub k is our product represent, our products uh, with the gamma functions and stuff like that. So very, very nice. Okay, so what we can do is we can kind of compactify things. So we're going to take um, this right here, and we're going to use this uh, definition. And when we do that, I'm just going to save you the headache. We get sum m equals 1 to infinity, a sub m, sum d equals 0 to infinity, cd of m, x to the dm, uh, d plus m, where c sub 0 of m equals 1, and cd of m is our product uh, of gammas. All right, very, very nice. So as you can see, this x to the uh, d plus m, all of a sudden, we went from you know d times uh, x to the d times m. Now we're to the, now we're x to the d plus m, which is kind of a huge step forward because it's kind of like undoing the multiplicity of things, right? This was multiplication. Now it's addition. Very very cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. Is we're going to put this uh, e to the negative x wherever we see an x, and when we do that, all of this happens right so in music theory we have this uh, repeat sign so because I just was running out of room um, all of this sum is going to go into the Mellon transform and when we do that um, what we get is this uh, M plus D to the negative s and n to the negative s and you might ask uh, where does the gamma of s go well in fact when we do it on both sides there's a gamma of s on uh, both sides, gamma of s, and so it just cancels out, right? So these just cancel out, okay? Now, if you're familiar with this channel, you will see that this is actually a Dirichlet uh, gamma of s function. So a Dirichlet function is a, uh, a Dirichlet series is like a generating function for uh, arithmetic functions. So classically, we would just have um, this. This is a classic one. But in this case, we're going to have an n factorial here. Now we're going to use Perron's formula. And Perron's formula says, hey, look, if you put this in here, so if you put this uh, you know, complex, whatever, in this kind of integral setup, you will get these finite sums, right? So you get uh, sum less than equal to x, a sub m, and oh look, there's our term right there. And we have our theta of x minus m plus d, all in parentheses, and we are really, really good. So this is a very cool result. I'm not going to lie, I'm actually very excited about this. I'm, I can't wait to explore deeper uh, this um, product series, because if we can get a handle on that, uh, I think there is some real potential there for uh, the Dirichlet divisor problem and many other problems. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, like, share, and subscribe.